There is no universal rule set that can be applied to any weapon to make the perfect build, but nonetheless, there are several things or guidelines you should know that, when followed, will greatly increase your chance of producing a good build. The first one is, the right elemental damage is mandatory. This should be nothing new to most players, but it's amazing how often I see builds that either don't use elements at all, like all slash swords and such nonsense, or terrible combos like Blast. Don't get me wrong, Blast is a funny element on high status chance weapons built for crowd control, but as a DPS element there are always better options. When deciding on which element to bring, there is nothing more helpful than a look at the Damage 2.0 page on the wiki. Here you can see how strong or weak all elements are against the different enemies. And if you add up the strengths and weaknesses of an element while keeping in mind which enemies are priority targets, it should be pretty easy for you to determine what you need. If you are up versus Grenier or the Corrupted in the Void, you will have to deal with armored enemies. Here it is important to know that not only does elemental damage with a strong bonus versus armor deal more damage to that enemy, but it also ignores an amount of armor equal to its bonus. That means if you have slotted radiation and are up against a bombard packing alloy armor, you will deal damage as if you'd have two and a half corrosive projections with you. But in reverse, this also means that a damage type like magnetic, which has a fierce penalty versus alloy, will face additional resistance from the armor. And you can see just how much difference this makes in the demonstration in the background. Note that on the occasion of having four corrosive projections in your squad, armor is completely removed from all enemies, in which case you usually focus on viral damage instead. The second thing to know is to minimize diminishing returns. The modding system consists of several groups of mods that all interact multiplicatively with each other. Base damage, multi-shot, elemental damage, fire rate, critical chance and damage and utility. Now, for each additional mod of one type you add to your build, its effect on total DPS diminishes, as opposed to adding a mod of another group. Here's an example. On an empty weapon, adding a plus 90% elemental damage mod does exactly what it says. It increases your total DPS by 90%. So, your total DPS is now at 190% of its base DPS. Adding a second 90% elemental mod increases your DPS to 280%. But when taking the 190% baseline of the previous build, that's only a 47% DPS increase. As you add more and more 90% elemental mods, each additional one will have less and less impact on your DPS. So, the more of the same thing you add, the less effect it has, and this is called diminishing returns. Now adding a mod of a different category will multiply everything you already have by its value. If you have no other base damage mods on your weapon, a Hornet Strike will always triple your DPS, no matter what mod of other groups are on the weapon. So, there are two ways to minimize diminishing returns. First, split your mods evenly among the different mod groups if possible. And second, always check how much value from one mod category is already on your weapon. The 66% base damage increase from a Magnum Force might seem decent enough, but then there's already a 220% base damage from Hornet Strike on your pistol, its effect is dwindling. Another really important part is knowing when to use crane mods. Unlike other types of mods, these ones require a certain minimum of critical chance and damage multiplier on your weapon, and thus will not result in optimal DPS on all weapons. The two important things to know here are, critical damage is much more worth than critical chance, and the combined strength of the crit mods varies vastly between the different weapon classes. A 20% crit rifle with a 2 times crit multiplier will highly benefit from a crit build, but a melee weapon with these stats will not. A crit build also introduces the element of chance, and this is where common sense is needed. The more attacks per second a weapon can dish out, the more your critical hits will normalize. If your weapon is reliant on strong single hits, having the majority of your DPS come from a 20% crit chance makes little sense. If the weapon would attack 10 times per second though, you're very likely to hit the 20% once or twice, so a crit build could pay off. Also, remember that critical headshots deal 4 times damage as opposed to normal headshots dealing only double damage. If you can score headshots reliably with the weapon, the minimum crit stats required for a viable crit build lower significantly. 
Next step is identifying and counteracting the weapon's weaknesses. Many of these will only show themselves through practical testing, with Exhibit A being the accuracy loss from heavy caliber. Others, however, can be seen by looking at raw stats. We have learned before that to minimize diminishing returns, we should use mods of all categories, and equally so at best. This, however, is a little more tricky when it comes to fire rate mods, since this guide is intended for making viable endless mode builds, not running out of ammo is a key factor. If a weapon already has a high rate of fire, chances are adding fire rate mods will ruin your ammo economy, so even though not using them is a DPS loss, having more damage per shot would be more desirable. If you keep running out of ammo no matter what, and you don't want to spam ammo plates, an ammo mutation mod might be in order. You should also know that semi-automatic weapons are capped at 10 shots per second, so fire rate has reduced or no effect at all on many of them. But even some slow firing weapons might not benefit from fire rate mods if the magazine doesn't support it. The Tonkor fires a measly 2 shots per second, but this is already the whole magazine, and after emptying it, it spends 2 seconds on reloading. When you are spending more time reloading than shooting, you should have a really good look at reload speed mods instead. Cutting down the time spent reloading will not increase your burst, but benefits your sustained DPS. This also blends into the topic of utility mods, which, when used in the right situation, can have devastating effects, even though at first they don't seem to influence DPS. For example, Amprex and Atomos are beam weapons that can chain between multiple enemies. Adding their respective beam range extension mods will also vastly increase the chaining range and transform these guns into the room clearers they are known for. Speaking of AoE though, this is a topic where opinions differ. Punch through mods and firestorm can potentially increase your damage by increasing the amount of targets hit, but personally I rarely use them anymore. Especially in the void, the game has changed a bit from the pure horde slaughtering it once was to a state where nullifiers and ancients protect a wide area of mobs from AoE, and enemies like bombards are a high priority that need to be dealt with as fast as possible. Meaning you don't care so much if the lancer behind it dies at the same time, but you want to minimize the time it takes you to kill that one bombard. Area damage is still incredibly strong on weapons that innately have it, but when confronted with the choice between adding more AoE or more single target damage, I would choose single target most of the time. And for the sake of completeness, a quick outlook on status chance. If you run a DPS build, status procs will just be a side effect most of the time. With many of the really good ones like Radiation or Viral only required to proc once, and most weapons having good enough base status procs per second to deliver exactly that. Running Corrosive though, getting multiple procs off on an armor target is extremely beneficial and, especially in very high levels, reduces the time to kill the target a lot. So, if you decide between Corrosive and Radiation, strongly consider the potential status procs per second your weapon can produce, as even if Bombards are your highest priority, a Corrosive build with dual stat mods might be the more effective overall solution. If you made it to this point, congrats, I hope you learned something new. And if you already knew all this, don't fret, this was just an introduction, and we have merely scratched the math underlying weapon modding. In the next video, we'll have a closer look at DPS calculations and actual min-maxing, so stay tuned and be patient. Goodbye!